Thank you all for joining with us today. I've had the opportunity to meet earlier today with the Border Patrol, uh, both at the local level as well as the national level. Uh, also the opportunity to get a briefing from the Texas Department of Public Safety uh, and the National Guard, as well as have the opportunity to fly over the region. As we were flying over the region, we did see people uh, crossing the border illegally uh, and making their way across the river uh, onto the Texas side of the border. Uh, we saw an ICE detention center uh, as well as uh, other holding facilities. Uh, and obviously we are uh, at this location now. Uh, in my briefing, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, speak to leaders at national lo local levels. I, I do want to thank uh, people who are with us here today. Uh, they include the uh, director of the Texas Department of Public Safety, uh, Steve McCraw, uh, General Norris, uh, the uh, adjutant general in charge of the National Guard in the state of Texas, uh, as well as the national president uh, for the Border Patrol Council, uh, Brandon Judd. I thank them for being here, but also uh, especially for our state team members uh, for their, their, their leadership uh, in the Texas Operation Lone Star. Let me begin by making one point very clear. There is a crisis on the Texas border right now uh, with the overwhelming number of people who are coming across the border. This crisis is a result of President Biden's open border policies. It invites illegal immigration and is creating a humanitarian crisis in Texas right now uh, that will grow increasingly worse by the day. In getting information in my meeting with the Border Patrol, I learned these things. And that is one of the reasons for this crisis that has led to a dramatic change in just a few months is the change in policy. There was a policy uh, that uh, people who had come across the border illegally would be returned across the border and there was also the remain in Mexico policy. Uh, with the elimination of those policies, that led to a dramatic increase in the number of people coming across the border. Uh, second, uh, the, the Border Patrol told me that they did inform the Biden administration and let them know that this influx was coming. So it's not as if the Biden administration didn't know about it, and it's not as if they didn't have time to get prepared for it, but it is clear they are completely unprepared for what is going on the border now, and they're going to be even more unprepared for what will be happening in the coming months. What the Border Patrol told me, and this is actually part of the cartel strategy, because of the volume of people coming across the border, the Border Patrol that makes uh, the, the arrest, they have to engage quite literally in babysitting. And while they're doing babysitting, that provides an opportunity for the cartels to be able to bring other people across the border illegally. More about the cartels in a second. Two factoids that the Border Patrol shared with me. Just this calendar year alone, there have been more than 800 criminal aliens apprehended. Those were criminals, uh, violent criminals, who had been previously arrested in the United States and deported who came across the border again. Among those included 78 sex offenders and 62 gang members, including gang, gang members from MS-13. And know this, cartels, they are ramping up trafficking across the border. They're exploiting women and children, and they are overwhelming Border Patrol resources. The Border Patrol has made very clear to me the way this strategy works. The cartels, they are involved in every single one of these border crossings that we see. But more important, the cartels are even more involved in the crossings that we do not see. The strategy of the cartels is to overwhelm Border Patrol agents and law enforcement officials. And when the Border Patrol agents are so completely overwhelmed, it's during those moments that the cartels will bring across the border even the more dangerous elements. It could be uh, people who are violent criminals, or it could be people who are from what are called uh, special interest countries. Those are interests, uh, those are countries that are uh, uh, raise concerns uh, about the danger they may pose to the United States, such as people coming from countries like Iran and Iraq, China, as well as elsewhere. The cartels are quite literally 
being enriched because of the policies that are being used by the Biden administration. He, the Biden administration is helping the cartels make more money and grow more power. They are uh, allowing smugglers who are members of cartel on the Mexican side bring in narcotic smugglers, special interest savings, as well as drugs that include fentanyl, cocaine, and opioids. One thing that is clear from all the observations and all the information that I've been able to gather, and that is we need more ICE detention facilities in this area immediately. But the Border Patrol simply is not either given enough resources and do not have enough resources to be able to deal with this overwhelming tidal wave of people who are coming across the border. Let me be clear. Border Patrol has a role to play. The role that Border Patrol plays is they're the ones who have to make the arrest and make the detention. Then the responsibility goes to ICE. It is up to ICE to detain, to test, and to quarantine anybody who's coming across the border who may have exposure to COVID. The Biden administration does not want to talk about ICE. The Biden administration is joining together with progressives, pretending that ICE is going to go away or be eliminated. ICE is essential in this entire process, and we expect the president and the Biden administration to step up, fully fund, and actually add additional funding to the ICE program, as well as provide ICE with every tool and strategy they can provide them to make sure that they're going to be able to play the role they must play when people do come across the border. Also, let me make this very clear, because what I'm about to tell you is maybe one of the most reprehensible things I've heard this whole time. The Biden administration is not providing vaccinations for the Border Patrol. We have Border Patrol officers whose lives are on the line on a daily basis, an hourly basis. And the Biden administration will not step up and provide those Border Patrol officers with the vaccinations they need. The Biden administration should surge vaccines to Texas to all men and women on the Border Patrol this week and ensure that every Border Patrol officer in the state of Texas will be vaccinated this week. Anything less than that is the epitome of inhumanity. It's also clear, and it's been clear long before this administration, that the border-related issue is the federal government's job. But Texas is not going to shy away from stepping up and filling the gap that the federal government has left open. I've told you some of the stories, and there are so many more. My phone has been ringing off the hook from ranchers in, in this region and regions west of here about the dramatic increase in the number of people who are crossing their ranches and causing mayhem on their ranches. You've got business owners, you've got homeowners whose lives are being completely disrupted. And the Biden administration does not care about those ranchers, those homeowners, and the peoples whose lives are being disrupted. He does not care about Americans. He cares more about people who are not from this country. I need the Biden administration to step up and start providing the safety and security that Texans and Americans deserve. What Texas is doing, with the help of the Texas National Guard as well as with the Texas Department of Public Safety, we've, uh, we've launched Operation Lone Star. This is an operation that's going to be similar to what we've done in the past where we provide a surge of resources to the border. The reason why you see these patrol cars lined up behind us because that is exactly what the Texas Department of Public Safety has done in the past whenever we have seen the surge of people coming across the border. This is an example of what you're going to see up and down the border. And let me be clear about something. One reason why we are surging Operation Lone Star at this time is because we know what is coming behind all the people who are crossing the border today, and that is the caravans that are seeking to come here. And Texas is sending a message to any caravan and to any cartel member, we're ready, we're waiting for you, if you dare step into the state of Texas, 
Texas will use every tool and strategy we can to, to arrest anybody who's violating the law, to put behind the bars anybody who's violating the law, to make sure that the laws in the state of Texas are going to be enforced. If you are a caravan or you're a cartel, you better take your activities to some other place because they will not be accepted in Texas. We will work to step up and try to fill the gap that the federal government is leaving open by making sure that we deploy every resource, whether it be Texas Department of Public Safety, National Guard, whatever we need to do, Texas is going to fight for the safety and security of our state. To help provide you more information about that, I will call up now the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety, Steve McCraw. Governor, thank you. Your leadership. Well, clearly, uh, make no mistake about it. The cartels, as the governor said, are trying to exploit Border Patrol by overwhelming them. When they do, they move methamphetamine, cocaine, marijuana, heroin between the ports of entry, plain and simple. And they, move, they move ammunition and weapons south, and they also move cash south, plain and simple. And there's no question that Border Patrol, properly resourced, properly staffed, equipped with the right equipment and technology, can secure the Texas-Mexico border. As the governor said, it's a sovereign responsibility for the federal government to do so. In the absence of that, it impacts not just in terms of Texans in the border region, but Texans everywhere, and quite frankly, everybody internationally. I mean, the cartels, if you've got a drug problem in New York City, in Los Angeles, in San Francisco, or Chicago, you've got a border problem because the cartels dominate the drug and human smuggling market. And I can tell you another thing. As long as cartels are allowed to lure, to entice, to bring women and children, you know, into the United States, they'll be preyed upon. And the depravity of the Mexican cartels is unseen by any organized crime group ever. And what they do, the brutality, would shame ISIS in that regard in terms of what they do. They're a domestic security threat to the government of Mexico, to the enemy of Texas, and the enemy of the United States. Governor, thank you for your leadership. Thank you. And now, Tracy Norris, uh, the Adjutant General of the Texas National Guard. Thank you, sir. Uh, currently, the Texas Military Department, your Texas... Why don't you step over to the middle oh, a little bit, sorry. thank you. I didn't want to be right in front of you. Go. You're fine. Uh, we, we, are, uh, have deployed, we are deploying over 500 soldiers at this time. We are going to be in support of the Texas Department of Public Safety. Uh, we will be doing observation posts on along the area uh, that DPS as designates for us. Uh, currently, we already have planners embedded with DPS, and we currently have soldiers already training for these events to, in order to establish observation posts later this week. Uh, we have been supporting the border for our governor and then for our federal and state partners for over 15 years. Actually, over 100 of the soldiers that are going to be on this mission came off of the border at the end of last year, so we already have experience there again. And one last thing I'd like to do real very quickly is I'd like to thank the employers of our citizen soldiers for everything that they've supported them to do over the last year, which includes our COVID response, response to hurricanes, and even a response to last winter weather. So I want to thank the employers and their families for supporting our Texas citizen soldiers. And we are Texans supporting Texans. Thank you, sir. Thank you, General. And uh, last will be the national president for the Border Patrol Council, Brendan Judd. Thank you, Governor. It's a very interesting and refreshing to be able to speak with an elected official that the first time that you meet with him, I'm sorry, prior to uh, this out here with us today, all he wanted to know was facts. No rhetoric, no opinion. He wanted to know facts. As a 23-year veteran of the Border Patrol, having been called upon to testify before Congress on 19 different occasions in the last five years, more than any other individual on border security that I'm aware of. He wanted to know facts, and I appreciate that. This is not a Republican versus Democrat issue. This is an issue that affects the American citizens, and Governor Abbott wants to be at the forefront. He wants to work with across the aisle to fix this issue once and for all. He brought up the simple fact that policy today is allowing cartels to enrich themselves. It's allowing cartels to prey upon the innocent, women, children. Cartels, because 
of current policy are allowed to go into countries like Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and they're allowed now, because of policy, to advertise their services, encourage women and children to put themselves in the hands of these dangerous individuals that Com Commander McGraw talked about. We're seeing the abuse, we're seeing the rape, we're even seeing the murder of these innocent individuals because policy is allowing them to generate profit. Our policy should be about the American citizens, the U.S. citizens, and its protection. When we look at that, there are simple solutions. We saw under the Trump administration the migrant protection protocols, the Remain in Mexico policy, it drove illegal immigration to 45-year lows. It cut into the criminal cartel's profits. Now that the MPP has, has been done away with, without replacing it with a policy that would address the same issue, has caused illegal immigration to explode. We have reintroduced that magnet that invites people to come here to the United States illegally. This is not about legal immigration. Simply put, the Biden administration, if he wants to call the migrant protection protocols inhumane, there's other things that he can do. Hire judges, adjudicate the asylum process immediately, allow those individuals that have a legal claim to be in the United States to stay in the United States. Deport those that do not have a legal claim. Hold these individuals in custody get rid of what has been dubbed the catch and release program. That is what draws people to cross the borders illegally. That is what is causing the innocent people to put them, their, themselves in the hands of these dangerous cartels. Work with the governors, like Governor Abbott, who cares deeply, and I have had the, the opportunity to speak with him on multiple occasions. He cares deeply about the innocent women and children and wants to support the legal immigration, not illegal immigration. Give us judges. Adjudicate the asylum process as people enter the country, and we will fix the illegal immigration system that works here. Again, I want to thank Governor Abbott. I want to thank him for his leadership and being at the forefront and working on this issue. 